Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be working with a lab on Azure AD identity protection. So to add uh, here uh, the identity protection here, you don't see it normally. You need to go to the research uh, and you need to add that. So I'm just searching here as identity. You see here identity. So I can see here Azure AD identity protection and I can click on that so the blade is coming up here and I can pin it if really needed here it's pinned to uh, my dashboard too now this is the uh, overview section where you have the complete dashboard if you have already configured uh, it will be showing you here how many risky users are detected or risky configured policies and all that information including the signing risks and also your score on identity score currently it is configured a score is 28 out of 203 which is Microsoft recommendation now as we talked earlier there are two different categories where we configure so simple one would be the user risk other one would be the signing risk the first one is the uh, user uh, risk we will have a look on it so user risk is uh, need to be you know, configured. Uh, I'm sure that you know, uh, not all the user accounts will have the Azure P2 license. Definitely so, you may have to you know, scope it um, for this. If you want to you know, apply for all users, that's well and good. And you have, that means you have the P2 license. If you don't have the P2 license, and uh, you can you know click here and select the specific group group of users uh, for example one of the group uh, for example in my case if i have mfa enabled users group this is the group in the last demo we actually enabled uh, p2 license so we can select that group for example so in my case i'm just choosing as the all users and here you can exclude any of the user accounts that do not want to apply the specific policy. So here all users selected and now the condition is coming. So in within this uh, condition is selected here, what kind of you know, risk is? So I need to select here three radio buttons. Out of this, one radio button to be chosen. One is medium and above or low and above. So if I found this is a risky user, that means uh, medium and above, if I treat, it's all depends on, you know, based on the sign-in uh, the sign-in risk it will be automatically calculated so uh, it, it was not clearly mentioned what is treated as the high and low and medium but it's a meaningful that you know if you try to start with the medium and apo then it will be good and you can select that medium and apo click done so i did configured user risk now it's a time for control so the first one is the assignment um, for all the users the risk is treated as the medium and epo um, and controls are what kind of you know, access you want to grant whether you want to allow the user if so how you're gonna allow allow them to change the password uh, but you know we are enabling to allow the access but we are also requesting them to you know uh, change the password so I'll just select this and the policy now I need to you know, choose from off to on to enforce the policy and click on save now the user risk policy is enabled now the next one would be I can work with the uh, sign-in risk uh, policy so the policy is already configured now I'm gonna work with the sign-in risk policy here I can say this should be again the same uh, process like you want to allow for only specific AD group or for all users if you have the uh, Azure AD Premium 2 license you can take as all users if not you can also exclude the specific groups so in my case all users and conditions I'm saying that here again medium and above I'm choosing for the signing specific risk also and coming back to the control I wanted this time if the user is trying to sign in I wanted it to be uh, challenged with the multi-factor authentication now you might be you know um, getting a thought process what's the major difference between here signing uh, for sign-in risk as well as for the user risk so the difference between um, these two are user risk is that means the user ID and the password might be known in the uh, darknet or uh, maybe over the internet it was compromised so the 
so hackers knows the username and passwords in the known database so microsoft will purchase these unknown uh, information or they use the known usernames and passwords to uh, always the update they have their own mechanism to always check it uh, these uh, common passwords common compromised user ids of all the organizations and they update the database if they found that then here in the user risk it is asking us to change the uh, user id change the password actually uh, we, uh, that's the major difference so whereas with the sign-in risk it is actually proving uh, it, it is asking us to prove uh, with the multi-factor authentication as the next level of challenge so that's what i'm going to enable here that's the uh, sign-in risk i can save so that's a major difference um, I clicked on save so it will take some time to save maybe yeah it's saved so here uh, that's a major difference between the user risk and sign-in risk so user risk means the user credentials got compromised it might be available somewhere for sale uh, and it got compromised you might hear sometimes so many usernames and passwords got uh, already available over the internet in a dark net um, that's how they seal it right hacker so similar way if it was compromised this kind of in you know, a user ID and password then it is asking us to change the uh, password as a mandatory here to change the password so that's a risk and we configured now uh, so the uh, user risk as well as the sign in risk we configured now mfa registration policy also we're going to set it here so this is a policy for all users and uh, controls required mfa and i'm going to enforce this policy so clicking on save that would actually configures for mfa enabling uh, if it is any risk found now if i go back to my uh, risk reports i should be able to see here if i found any of the risky users similarly any of the risky signings i should be able to find here and the risk detections and more information can be found here and also you can configure under users risk detections with the alerts and also weekly digest also you can configure so now we will be trying to simulate now we configured uh, what to be done uh, what kind of policies to be uh, available and what kind of action to be automatically taken in a real time for demonstrating purpose i will be logging uh, i will be opening a private mode of the browser and i will try to open my apps.microsoft.com with an user account called daniel craig account and let's see what will happen for this user account so daniel craig account and password to be entered so i'll just enter the password that's fine for the save or not that's fine so it was not challenge anything here now the same account if i try to uh, log in from brazil um, what would happen let's see this is a mission from a different location altogether uh, from a brazil so the earlier we logged from india uh, now this is from brazil so let's open like my apps dot microsoft.com here i can enter the user id and the password now see this now it is asking me to enter the multi-factor authentication where i need to enter for that specific user the multi-factor authentication id so the code which is showing on my phone so i entered that i have verified and then it is allowed me to log in if you see in the azure portal there's no events got logged in as a risk because it was successfully uh, validated by the end user of that challenge that was asked to prove with the multi-factor authentication and it was successful so there was nothing has been happened and no events got generated here so far so i can refresh and show you one more time uh, there are no events here as a risk now the same thing we will be trying to do with the tour browser let's see that demo i have on my brazil machine uh, a tour browser got installed so as you know that tour uh, will be a circling so it's not going to connect from the same network if you see here uh, it is actually uh, coming from canada uh, with the tour
so that's why it is asking me to prove as a human all those so let me actually go to my apps dot microsoft dot com giving the same user id learn in my lab for daniel account and the password so now also we will be challenged with mfa and it says a suspicious activity detected and we have detected something unusual about the sign for example you might be signing from a new location a device or app before you can continue we need to verify your identity so this is altogether a suspicious activity because we're trying to log in from to browser uh, where it is actually circling as a circuit from different countries like canada germany romania and then it's going to the required microsoft site so it is asking us to you know verify now we got uh, three different options you see here approve a request on microsoft app authenticator or use your verification code or just a text message so if i can't do it uh, i can't proceed further so it's a real time so this is where you have the protection directly for the sign name uh, so i can say that uh, i want to prove myself as soon as i approve it in my mobile it is actually coming up saying that hey you must have to update your change the password because since someone else may have access your account you need to change uh, choose to a new password don't use the same password so that's the uh, configuration which is uh, popping up so changing the password now to sign in further and see what happens so i'm able to see the application so this is how it works if, if you just go to the identity protection manager uh, specific to the dashboard you can see now uh, there is a one count was initiated under user risk and uh, if i just go to the risky users or also if you see here the count and protection protect 11 times these are the fully automated because of the configure configured policy was taken action and uh, whatever the count number of counts it has come up so all that has been automatically remediated so let's go to the uh, risk specific now this is the user risk specific so i'll just uh, i'll just you know run here once again the policy so we said uh, if it is a risky user then require the change password and also we did in fact uh, it was asked for us to change the password now let's see whether it, this will report or not S here this is nothing showing because the reason being it has been automatically already remediated with the help of the policy so if i just in a filter and show you uh, here uh, with the remediate uh, specific then i should be able to see daniel craig account and he tried to access and the user perform secure password change so the risk state is currently remediated so if you confirm that i mean this is complete process is fully automated and you want to take some kind of an you know, action you can still take like confirm user compromise or um, you can uh, dismiss user risk it all depends on the action uh, can taken from the azure admin let's also check from the risky signing uh, what happened if you see here by default risk state is only confirmed and compromised but if you want to know uh, located the remediate uh, purpose you might see some other uh, logs like you know here if i can see here the one is daniel craig's account which is uh, coming from the brazil location with the ip address as this and it got remediated so these are the detailed information you can uh, check out uh, from the risky users as well as the risky signing if you want this information automatically to get an email you can actually uh, look at here and configure the required email id so in my case i can configure here as the email ids which are configured so the user will get automatically all the required um, high specific risk only it is coming if i want this should come for low and medium uh, based on that it will start uh, coming up these alerts and also you can go for weekly digest uh, where the weekly uh, report will be sent to you so here you can include the required email ids so in our case we have already configured uh, these two which are in fact it's by default uh, for the access specific uh, 
to this it was already included so this is the uh, dashboard side view since I have very less data to show you I would like to show you more data from my other uh, tenant active directory so that you know you know how it looks like so if you see here you can take the multiple actions by selecting and confirm compromised or such actions also you can filter and you can perform the actions with the multiple uh, selections can be performed so you have here the uh, identities uh, score as well as the risky sign-in and risky uh, user specific and all these configurations except the protection you see the reporting also available in other place let me show you that also if you go to azure active directory and the security uh, if I just go to security and then this is where we used to configure even conditional access right so the same place you have here report specific risky users and risky sign in risky detection so you get he even here the same specific information 